Okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome from Austria. Uh, actually, here it's evening. Um, um, today, I will talk about beauty of mathematics and embroidery. <clears throat> so let me introduce myself. My name is Vesna Krunic. Um, I'm working at, sorry. I'm working at the Graz University of Technology. I'm a postdoc researcher and I'm also working at the CatRobot project. <clears throat> so what's the CatRobot project? It's a free open source project and we are developing free open source software um, and we are a non-profit organization. So actually 548 developers are contributing to our project. And additionally, we have 659 translators. So what, what are we doing? Um, we're developing mobile apps. So um, Catrabat has at the moment um, one, two, three, four, five, six, and from today, seven apps in Play Store. Uh, our main app, is called Pocket Code. So Pocket Code is a visual programming language um, which um, users can use just on a mobile phone. They don't need, don't need a PC or whatsoever. So they can program on a mo mobile phone. Um, our project uh, was inspired by, of course, Scratch. 2010, we started with uh, development of Pocket Code and we also were inspired by snap but i will talk about that later so what can a user do with pocket code same like with snap and scratch uh, build animations program games interactive musics apps or and the most advantage of pocket code and of our apps is that a user can use all sensors of a mobile phone, for example, the light sensor or the GPS sensor or the um, mag magnetometer sensor or the touch sensor. And here we are. Um, two years ago, we met Andrea from Turtle Stitch and we thought that's amazing coding and embroidery so that was our inspiration and we decided to implement the feature in pocket code so 2018 we started with a project name, named code and stitch um, the main aim goal of the project uh, was to extend pocket code app um, to be able to program embroidery machines. And the second goal of the project was uh, to include uh, programming embroidery machines into handicrafts lessons in Austria. So in, in crafts and arts. And our main goal uh, was to teach digital skills to the um, young people. And we do it through design of textiles. So uh, our workflow was, first of all, the students uh, selected the design. Then if the design uh, is too complicated, they need to simplify the design. Uh, they draw it optionally on a paper, on a piece of paper. And the next step would be to code it and then to export an embroidery file, a DST file, and the last step is to stitch uh, the design on a textile. So we did a lot of workshops at schools and our goal was to teach uh, computer skills, to teach programming. So in unit one, uh, we design, the teachers designed together with the students um, the designs they want to program. So the second step was to code. So the students um, 
uh, get help from mentors, from students from the university. So they together, first of all, they, um, they introduce pocket code. They introduce how to program with this mobile visual programming language. So this was the first unit. And in the second unit, the students programmed their own designed designs. And the third unit, um, we stitched to, uh, together with the students the embroidery designs on t-shirts and on bags. And at the end, they have something to show, to wear it, to, to be proud of. But uh, what it was a big surprise for us that um, we teach a lot of math, math stuff to the students. So it was not only teaching uh, variables and loops and conditions, uh, but we teach a lot of mathematics. So for example, um, the basic thing we started with the uh, Cartesian coordinate, coordinate system. So um, the first questions, oh, what, what's, what's the x-axis, what, what the epsilon axis? So we need to uh, explain the coordinate system, but in a very playful way. Then, for example, uh, we teach, um, okay, how do you draw a square? So a square, you can um, draw a line, then you, you need to turn in a direction, then we, we teach about degrees and so on. So they, they learned, ah, okay, I need to, to, to uh, turn left 90 degrees. Then we also teach, of course, loops and so on. Um, the next steps uh, was to talk about circles and polygons. So we don't uh, say to them, okay, now you need to learn something about the circle. No, um, they want to program a circle, to design a circle. And then we, we, we talked about, okay, how can you do that? And then we talk about angels, about the, the size of the circle and about the loops. Um, the next step uh, was to talk about polygons. So, okay, now I'm able to program a, a square. So how can I program a um, triangle? So the next step was to talk about greatest common divisor. So they learned in a very playful way, what is the greatest common divisor? So in my talk, I, I will not talk about uh, the greatest common divisor because it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not funny. Uh, but um, the students learned about all the math stuff um, in a very, very playful way. So um, at the end, they were able to program a triangle, to program a star, and to program a pattern uh, they want. Um, in higher classes, uh, we also introduce advanced uh, mathematics stuff like sinus and cosinus or Pythagorean. So if someone wants to uh, program a circle, they learn about the circle equation in a very playful way, programmed in pocket code. So our uh, goal was, okay, you want to program a circle, and now we will look together uh, all the mathematics stuff. So you don't, you, you don't need to care about the mathematics at the beginning. For example, some of our students um, want to, this, uh, to, to program an ellipse. So what's our approach? Okay, I want to program the Batman. Great, and now we look at the mathematics behind that design. 
Um, another example how we teach mathematics uh, math stuff is, for example, one of the students want to program um, as Chirana or the, the um, triangle or a boat. So then um, they want to do it. So teaching them how to do that was easy because we didn't say to them, okay, now we are talking about uh, Pythagoras, uh, we are talking about a circle uh, or about ellipses. No, the step, the first step was, okay, I want to program the design and now please can you tell me how to do that? So, um, teaching mathematics through embroidery is something that, that is not abstract. So something you can touch. So students um, were very excited when they um, embroider their math mathematic formulas and then they, they could wear it, they could show it to others. Learning mathematics by using it, by creating something, by, by creating some new designs. Um, in the last few months, um, we were not able to go to schools and to um, have our workshops, workshops at schools. So we designed a new uh, kind of workshops. Um, we designed, um, we created a lot of embroidery uh, tutorials, how to embroider, how to program an embroidery design step by step. And then with teachers and with the students at, at, at home uh, together, we finished our project. So um, the main advantage uh, about our app is that the students did not need any uh, special hardware. The only thing they needed uh, was a smartphone. So, and in Austria, I don't know, um, in Austria, almost every student uh, has their own smartphone. Um, and since today, we are very proud to announce that our newest app, Embroidery Designer, is um, published. So, um, you can use Embroidery Designer, the, the, the standalone app Embroidery Designer to create the embroidery stuff. And um, at the end, I would like to show you um, really, really nice designs that uh, students programmed uh, with pocket code. Uh, at the beginning of our project, we could, wouldn't imagine that they would program stuff like that. So um, that are all examples that our students programmed during um, coding weeks or during uh, school courses. Um, what is the next step with pocket code as with our in, uh, project? Um, we are experimenting with other fruit. Um, so we would like to program uh, and, and to play with light. So these are the first um, few examples of embroidery and programming with lids. So I was a little bit too quick, but I'm at the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So are there any questions or So there, there was one question about if it's Android only. Um, 
the embroidery version is only uh, available for Android phones. Uh, actually, we are working on the iOS version. So uh, yes, at the moment, you can only embroider, you can only uh, create designs with the Android version. Um, the question, which, which embroider, which embroidery machine do I recommend or um, we use in, uh, in on, 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 for our project, we use uh, br uh, the Brada. We have three different uh, embroidery machines and they are all from the, uh, from Brada. And Okay, um, so um, pocket code is from age of 13 and up to, uh, we also teach uh, pocket code to students at the university. So, um, but I think it's, it's really important that um, children are able to, to read, to, that they, they should be at least able to, to read. Ah, okay. Um, we also have a wiki page, but I think uh, we didn't provide much information about um, the embroidery machines, but we'll, we will do it in the future. Yes, it can be adapted, definitely it can be adapted for 11 years. Um, we need to, uh, because in Google Play, uh, in the Play Store, you need to decide for whom is the app. Is it for children or is it for, ed for, for el elderly children? So with Pocket Code, you have a community page so everyone can share their projects and we are not, um, we are not controlling all the projects. So we need to say, okay, it's up to 13, but uh, yes, it, it's, it's it's for sure adaptable for 11 year olds. I also work with 10 year olds, uh, all children. Yeah, I think um, um, the experience with embroidery and programming, uh, our first um, thought was yeah, it will be definitely for girls. It will be something that only for girls. But in the end, um, the boys are programmed more than the girls and they are, they are also enthusiastic about that, that project. So it's, it's, not, it's not only for, for girls, but definitely we need some, some stuff to, to, for the girls too. Um, the curriculum is not, uh, yes, there is a curriculum available, but I'm not sure if it's in English. Uh, I think now it's available in German, but uh, our students are translating it uh, at the moment in, in English. So um, all the stuff uh, will be um, published on our wiki page, on the wikiketrobot.org and then go to the education and then embroidery section. Uh, so the question is, how did the students get their finished products learning from home? Um, I'm not sure. Um, did the teacher print the, their embroideries from them? No. Okay, in our project, uh, we included um, um, a small a shop in our city. Uh, they, they embroider it for the students. So the students from homeschooling, they're sharing their designs with uh, Google Drive or with uh, via email uh, to Apfelputzen, that's a fair trade uh, shop in, in Graz in Austria. 
and they embroider the stuff and then they send it to school. So after a while, the students uh, come back to school and then they get their embroidered stuff. But um, our intention is that uh, every school uh, buy their own embroidery machine because it's not so expensive. Uh, we are talking about uh, four to 500 euros. So uh, many schools buy their own embroidery machine so they, they can adapt the project and, and do it in the future. Yeah, a, mark, a, a, a maker space is definitely a solution. So in Graz, we also have a one maker space with an embroidery machine. Um, but the problem with the uh, maker space is that you need um, some introductionary lessons. So um, embroidering is not, uh, let me say that the first steps are not so easy. So you need some practice to do it uh, right. So yes, but it's, it's definitely an option. Um, yeah, it depends. Um, so the, the question is what features will you advise to look uh, for when buying an embroidery machine? Um, the state of the art embroidery machines until now uh, work with USB uh, plug-in. So, um, I think it would be nice uh, to have a, a real um, a embroidery machine that you can use uh, with wireless LAN. So, but uh, I also uh, saw some new embroidery machines with uh, wireless LAN. Um, yeah, we are, so the, the question is about the DSD uh, file, the embroidery uh, file. Um, that was the first step in our project to include the DSD file, but we will definitely uh, include other embroidery formats in the future. So the, the, this is a pilot project, so we didn't expect that it will work so, so wonderful. And um, we definitely will um, do it um, for the next few years and we will include other embroidery formats. Um, at the moment, we are only supporting the DSD file, but um, we will uh, implement um, other formats as well. So, um, now it's not easy to um, get students to develop stuff in our project, but I think it will, uh, we will get used to the situation now. And um, I think at the end of the year, we will support at least another format, another embroidery uh, format. So, but the DSD was just the beginning. <laughs> So laser cutter, yeah, um, for sure. We, 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 that's also um, a ticket uh, in our backlog to, to um, convert the design into a vector graphic. No, the, also the question, do students have trouble with hoping fabric? No. <laughs> okay. What what do you mean? What do you tell them? So what 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 kind of um, okay? <laughs> In our project, we have uh, we are working with, with handicraft um, teachers together, and they are so I am a programmer, and I I I'm caring. I, I'm 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 doing the programming stuff and, and I'm, I'm looking that the app is developed well and so on. And we have um, teachers that, 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 that are very great at the handicraft stuff and they are doing the whole um, embroidering. Okay, 
So I have it. Um, thank you very much. Um, I think time is up and um, we'll welcome the next speaker. Thank you again, Vesna. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you.